Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Joy of Puzzles. I have for you today a puzzle titled Films. It was published in the year 2020 by White Mountain Puzzles. White Mountain Puzzles was established in 1978 and they were originally a manufacturer of posters. They are located in a rural community in New Hampshire right in the White Mountains, an aptly named company name near Mount Washington. Uh, the original founders are lucky enough to have kept the business in their family and they are still somewhat involved and have passed it on to their kids to run. So kudos for them for keeping uh, a local industry local. I have the link for their website on the, in the comment section. The artist is listed as James Millett. I was not able to find a website for this gentleman, nor was I able to find a LinkedIn website or anything of the kind for Mr. Millett. Uh, I like to give him credit if I can find him, but I couldn't. I searched for a while and nowhere to be found. That's okay. So. Let's talk about the strategy on how to build a puzzle like this. So this is a collage style puzzle, which means there is no uniform or boundaries that you get in natural, you know, natural scenery type puzzles where you have a skyline and things of that nature. So it does appear to be haphazard as I build this as far as what my methodology is, but it's really not. I do have a plan. Uh, it just diverges from that plan with some regularity because you stumble across pieces and go, oh, I know exactly what this is. So, I start with a border. It's the general tactic for most puzzles. Uh, and because this is a collage, I don't have a sky and a horizon or something of that nature, but I do have a giant marquee in the middle of the puzzle with the word movie in it. Now, movies, I should say, and the, the puzzle is named Films, but the main piece of text in the center is Movies. Well, once that is built, the marquee and the, the lighting around it, the next part of the strategy was to pull colors um, and build little pockets of the puzzle. So the next thing I went after was the green pieces. There's enough green objects and they're dispersed throughout the image that you, again, you create little bits of puzzle here and there fully, fully formed that you can then build around and onto later. And after the green pieces, we went for the red pieces. Uh, there, is, there are two people involved, so it gets a little more chaotic about halfway through this video when my son joined me. Uh, and what ends up happening is you start recognizing things and features and even though you're not looking for a particular color you said oh I know exactly where this is because you you recognized a little tidbit of artwork and uh, so it becomes a little more random as the puzzle goes by despite the intention of having a fixed strategy this is a thousand piece puzzle and it was frankly incredibly easy it took less than four hours to build uh, i did the first half by myself and my son joined me for the second half um, so by myself it's probably a five hour build somewhere around there my experience says a thousand piece puzzle that's less than seven or eight hours is easy uh, i would say seven or eight is probably normal for one person Review time. I'm gonna review this puzzle in four different categories on a scale of one to five. The first category is puzzle material quality itself. Uh, White Mountain Puzzle uses a recycled paperboard. They call it blue chip paperboard. You can see all the blue pieces, the backs. Um, experience tells me it's 50-50. A lot of recycled puzzles uh, there is a poor bond between the the image and the paperboard, and the paperboard itself is can be broken apart very easy, so the pieces don't fit well and things of that nature. But all that said, completely not true in this case. Um, the folks at White Mountain Puzzle are using clearly a higher grade 
recycled paper that I run into from some other manufacturers and the paper cut quality, if they didn't say recycled, I would never know. So I'm going to give this a three, right where it should be, right in the middle. Um, again, if it wasn't written on the box, I would have never thought it was recycled paper. So right where it should be, kudos to them for job well done. Puzzle cut quality, on the other hand, our second category. In this case, I have to give a two. And strangely enough, I guesstimate about 5% of the pieces were stuck together when I took the puzzle out of the bag. Um, yeah, just really weird to run into that many pieces that were not cut at the manufacturer and still tethered together. And I try not to take advantage of it. I try to break them apart as, as in my initial pass through of sorting the pieces and all that stuff. But yeah, occasionally you're tempted and you leave them together. And then I find them when I try to take the puzzle apart again. I get all pieces stuck together. So it, it wouldn't impact the second build of this puzzle, but it does impact the first build. Our third category is difficulty. In general, puzzles that are collage like this are easy. Uh, most of the time you can pick a piece, look at the box, and go, oh, I know right where this goes. Even if it's not a section of the puzzle you're building. So, I'm going to give this a two. Uh, difficulty is not a bad thing, right? Just a two of difficulty? Great. If, if that's where you want to be, if you want to sit down and knock this out in a single afternoon, you're looking for a two. Um, or you're bringing in, say, uh, a young kid who doesn't have a lot of puzzle experience. This is something they can participate in and feel like they've accomplished something. So, a two. Not a bad thing, but it is a two. It only took four hours. My fourth category is the most subjective of them all, frameability. Is it something, if I was the type of person that would seal a puzzle, would this be on my list? Would I hang it somewhere in my house? Uh, I'm gonna give this a three. While it's not fine art, and it's not a beautiful scene of nature, there is nostalgia when you look at a puzzle like this. This is something you would hang in your, your man cave, or your whatever room you have dedicated to movies. If you're a movie buff at all, which I am, you you look at this puzzle and you have, you know, you enjoy it. You go through all, and like, oh, I know all these, what these are referencing. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna give it a three. It is something that makes an appropriate puzzle of our poster in the appropriate place. Overall, I'm going to give this puzzle a 3. Um, despite the cut quality, I know that will not impact me if I build this puzzle again because I separated all the pieces. It is a quick, easy build, so it's something to, to loan out to people who are uh, not looking for that type of challenge. So, overall, it's a 3 couple other comments. The I have a review of a puzzle up there called Movie Madness, and that movie had films from the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and 60s, and I'm a movie buff and didn't know them. This puzzle, on the other hand, yeah, I probably figured out every picture that was on here. It ranges from animated films to other classics like uh, Caddyshack, you know, one of the great comedies from the early 80s to pretty modern stuff as well. And of course, there's the big names like Star Wars and uh, you know, Shrek up there in the upper left-hand corner. And, and some of them, you got to look at it for a moment and then you realize what they're referencing. But there was a lot of iconic characters and moments and scenes that you you recognize everything that's up here including the red stapler i did a review of the office space puzzle earlier uh, the very famous red stapler put there by uh, milton anyways uh, so here we are at the end of the puzzle i hope you enjoyed the video if you did go ahead and click the like button and uh maybe share it with a friend always always looking for a couple new subscribers well anyways thanks again everyone hope you enjoyed joy of puzzles and uh, i'll have another puzzle up for you probably in a week thanks again bye